Staff Room Monologues, in association with the National Union of Teachers. Coming to the end of a career in any profession can be a traumatic experience, and this monologue sums it up beautifully. It's written with enormous verve and insight by a primary school teacher from Lancashire, and I hope you enjoy it. I can't believe she sat in there eating apricots like nothing's happened. My life is falling apart, and she's trying to tame her irritable bowel. <laughs> oh, I know she's feeling awkward. She always reaches for the dried fruit when she's embarrassed, makes her feel more self-controlled. Making her little jokes with the rest of the staff. Flicking through the box of book promotions. Oh, I wonder if I should get this for Dave. I love sailing. How am I going to tell Jim? It's engaged! You're going to have to use the disabled. Thinks we're off to the ciliars in half term. He's only just over his yeast infection that'll floor him. And he's ordered new trunks. Oh, I knew when she first started she was the predatory type. I thought we'd all start with a little brain, Jim. Come on, Jenny. Find your brain buttons. Margaret would never have had us fiddling with our bits. So humiliating. Some of us are over 50. It would have been coffee and natter and then down to business. Who's first on the biscuit rotor? Now it's... Do you think we should be really eating biscuits, especially with the Healthy Schools Award up for grabs? Well, the dainties were the first to go. Lady Muck sat there with her fennel tea and her Japanese silk scarf. Bloody strangler with her if she comes anywhere near me. Couldn't stop fiddling with it when she called me in, could she? Where was your composure then, Karen? Come on in, Jennifer. Sorry about the chill. The radiators are out of commission. Cut back, so we all have to make sacrifices. Even me, Jennifer. I got a Jenny when I offered to do the beetle drive because of a mother-in-law's birthday. I even had a Jen when I was the one who offered to clear the rat from behind Veronica's art cupboard. Only today, it was Jennifer. I knew it was ominous. Someone has to go, Jennifer. It's finances. I said, if it's finances, how come Angela's got state-of-the-art photocopier in the corner of her office and the fence has been fixed? It's been an arduous decision. Heartbreaking. I've even shed tears over it. But I'm afraid we've decided that it has to be you. She wasn't upset. Her glasses weren't smeared, her nose wasn't red. She hadn't a single hairline fracture on her lipstick. I'm busy. Was it the noun instant? Because I do know the difference between a verb and a noun. I mean, it was nerves. I did try to explain to the inspector. She said it wasn't the nouns. I said, well, I hope to God it wasn't because of what happened with little Liam Denneby. Because his mother was very understanding and said the little S-H-I-T had driven her to do just the same thing on many an occasion. She interrupted me. No, it wasn't just the Liam Denneby incident. Nor the assessment keeping book. Well, I'm sure it was on my shelf the last time I saw it. But I'd done the dyslexia training. And it wasn't just because they were lazy. I'd even given Daniel from year three the benefit of the doubt when he started spitting in assembly because he isn't all there after all. Autistic, she said. They're on the autistic spectrum. I said, I'm, I, I do try. I know you do, she said. But she wasn't for budging. She said that things had changed. Times had moved on, only I hadn't. 
I'd refuse to. I said, I don't refuse to. Only, I mean, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Exactly, she said. And there you have hit the nail on the head. 33 years service I've given this school. I was here when they knocked down the outside loos and built a bike shed. I was here when they got rid of that to make way for more parking. I saw them knock down blackboards to make way for whiteboards, unscrew whiteboards to make way for smart boards. I even learned to make a new folder for God's sake. How am I gonna pay for the sofa? Jim's benefit won't pay for it. What if he leaves me again? I can hardly make it through the weekend. It'll drive Jim mad being with me all the time. I mean, it'll drive me mad. I can't stay at home watching daytime telly, listening to him picking at his heels shuffling off to his workshop to look at his National Geographic and the rest of me thinks I know nothing about. It'll be me, Jim, and his flaky skin. There'll be murder. Well, she can stuff it. She can stuff a redundancy. I'm not going. They'll have to drag me out and then I can sue her for physical abuse. I'll stay here. I'll have to knock the door down. I've got Bourbons in my handbag. I'll be all right. I'm not budging. Why should I be cleared out along with the wooden furniture and the mercury thermometers? I'm part of this institution. Tell Her Majesty I'm on strike. This is a, a sit-in, a sit-down, a protest. I'm not coming out. I'm not. I'm not. I can't. One take four. Stand by, and action. My name is Janet Spooner. I'm a year four or five teacher at a little primary school, and I live in Todmorden in Lancashire. I was inspired to write Eating Apricots because, well, what inspired me actually was our staff room toilet, which sounds very odd, but I've always found that when you're teaching, you're so much in the public eye with your children and parents, that the only place you can feel yourself again, for me, is in our staff room toilet. So I knew I wanted to set a monologue in this little intimate place where you can just let all your emotions out, which I have done when you've had horrible children or a stressful day or you've had a, a, a confrontation with your head teacher. You can go and let all your emotions out in the privacy of the staff room loo. So I knew I wanted to set it there because I wanted that intimate space. And the character came from, I think I was inspired by the old school of teachers that you still have in schools, but they're, they're, they're on the verge of retiring, but they're definitely the old school. Um, when I started teaching about 10 years ago, it was the time when the literacy strategy and the numeracy strategy were all introduced and I was really fired up and geared for all these new strategies. And I used to go on courses where there'd be teachers at tables saying, oh, it's teaching us to suck eggs and don't want to, you know, it's a load of nonsense, all these new strategies. And I used to think that they were, I don't know, I thought they should be more inspirational about it, or put it like that. But 10 years down the line, and I've I kind of joined them because there's the new primary strategy now and the new, let's make a new strategy strategy. I don't know, there's just endless new strategies. And somehow I've got to fit in reading this massive ring binder of the same old way to do the thing job I've done, but in a different way, in between sort of changing nappies at home and looking after my little girls, and and it, I'm turning into one of the old school of teachers. I'm, I'm just looking at it down there. Yeah. Just come in. Right. Yeah, you're in there. Turn over.
Action. I can't believe she's sat in there eating apricots like nothing's happened. My life is falling apart and she's trying to tame a irritable bowel. I've got a very busy home life, mainly because I've got one and a half year old twins and a four year old daughter. Um, so to find time to write a monologue was, well, it was quite hard in between the ironing and the cleaning up the dried porridge off the floor and all of the other things that you have with young children. But I got the babies in bed and I settled down in front of a, I had the computer, the laptop and a little wooden toy box with the baby monitor and decided that I'd follow Tony Marchant's advice, which was just to start in the middle of the action. Don't start at the beginning, start in the middle. And then I slowly unraveled um, the action, slowly bit by bit. Oh, I can't she's believe she's sat in there eating apricots, like, eating apricots like, no, like nothing's happened. Mm -hmm. OK, and um, action. I know she's feeling awkward. She always goes for the dried fruit when she's feeling embarrassed. Making little jokes with the rest of the stuff. Mm -hmm. I was really, really chuffed to bits, mainly because it's been a long time since I've put pen to paper other than to write, well done, could do better, what a fantastic piece of work. And it was my work, and it's the first thing I've written in years. And I think I thought the brain had died after having children, but it's come back again, and it's been really nice. And I thoroughly enjoyed writing it. Mm -hmm.